in between slips. At least we got good access to it. Definitely leaking a lot of fuel. Yeah. Let us know. Uh, it's being held up by the bow. Yeah. You think that fiberglass will hold? I ain't gonna touch it. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, we're going to talk about pricing out salvage jobs and how do we actually do it. And you guys have actually seen us do salvages and you kind of get, we give you explanations of why we do things the way we do for safety concerns and, you know, financial concerns and things like that. But I've never really talked about how we price a salvage job. And so to start this video out, we're going to look at three different types of salvage jobs. Now, one is just going to be a search and recovery. One is going to be a salvage. One is going to be a public safety. And I'm going to talk about how I price out each of those jobs. And then, of course, we're going to go together to price out a job. So I'm going to take you out on an actual estimate, if you will, and I'm going to show you how we price it. And then at the end of the video, I'll give you some pointers that may help you in the future if you ever decide to get in this line of work. So the first thing I do, anytime we receive a phone call, I do a risk versus benefit analysis. And I decide whether or not it's even going to be beneficial for us without risking ourselves to do this job. The second thing I look for is, is this a recovery or is it a rescue? The third thing that I look for is what resources are going to be necessary to perform this. So that is the first three steps in anything. Risk versus benefit, is this a rescue versus recovery, and do we have the resources to do it? Once I answer those three questions, then I go in and I say, okay, is this an actual salvage? Is this an actual public safety dive, such as say a body recovery or a rescue, something of that sort? Or is this a uh, just a basic search and recovery, okay? So let's do the search and recovery first. If it's a basic search and recovery, the very first thing I do is say, this is not a company job, this is not a Lake Hickory Scuba Center thing, this is an individual diver thing. And I'll let my individual divers price out whatever they want to price it out. So if it's a pool repair, if it's a phone off the end of the dock, if it's a fishing rod that's a fisherman dropped in the cove, something of that sort, our individual divers price that out, not the company itself, because I'm not the only one that does uh, search and recovery dive here. And we've got a lot of different price ranges. Some of us charge more than others. Some of us doesn't charge as much as others. Uh, and some of us have uh, different uh, parameters that we'll search in. A great example of this would be if it's directly off the dock here at our marina and I don't have to travel anywhere, then it's going to be a lot cheaper than if I do have to travel somewhere because there's travel time built in. And then do we have to take a boat out in the water? Are you going to use your boat? That's going to be cheaper than if I have to use my boat. So there's certain parameters that we look at that dictate price. Now, now that we understand that search and recovery is... Uh, not a company thing, it's an individual diver thing. Let's talk about the salvage, the public safety, and the commercial side. Well, on the commercial side of things, where we're doing intake inspections and intake repairs and pump house inspections, that's where we climb down into the water of the pump house and whole nine yards, or if I'm swimming through the intake of a dam or something of that sort, then that is a by the hour job. So I make so much money per hour to be on the job. Now, this is a company thing, it's not just me. So there's there's gonna be more divers involved, there's gonna be surface crew uh, involved as well. So we charge per hour per person on site. And we charge the same amount of money regardless of whether the person's a diver or just surface crew. So if I got a surface crew I'm gonna that's not a diver, I'm gonna charge for the exact same amount of money and time for them as I would for one of the divers in the water. Now, our guys do make different amounts of money depending on what they're doing. However, we charge 
the same regardless. And that's a, that's a set amount per hour. So that's on the commercial side. Now let's look at the salvage side. On the salvage side, we have two different rates that we charge for. The first rate that we charge for is very similar to the commercial rate. It's by the hour per person. So let's say I got four people on the job. Well, it's gonna be whatever our price is by the hour times four. So you kind of get that. The second price range that we do, that is per size of the vessel and by the depth. So, and I'll just give you a rough estimate here. Right now in 2024, we are currently charging $150 per foot of the vessel for all salvages to a depth of 40 feet. So let's say your, your vessel sunk in, say 40 foot of water, 40 foot or less, you're gonna get charged $150 per foot of your vessel unless it goes deeper than 40 feet. If it's deeper than 40 feet, then that price doubles. Now it's gonna be $300 per foot of the vessel. But that's not just all because we still have travel time built into that. So if we've got to travel to the site, so you're gonna pay for travel time. If we have overnight lodging, you're gonna pay for overnight lodging. And then of course, if we have to tow a vehicle, or I'm sorry, a vessel, let's say we raise the vessel up for 150 foot per, per foot of the vessel or $300 per foot of the vessel. But now we've got to tow it, take it out of the water on a trailer and even stored at our facility, there's gonna be an additional cost built into that. So the, now that you've got a general idea of how we charge for search and recovery, uh, commercial work, salvage work. Oh, and we did forget public safety dives. Let's talk about public safety dives. So let's say we get called out to assist with a local fire department or police department or sheriff's office, something of that sort, and it's an actual rescue. Maybe it's a water rescue. There's people that are still, still floating in the water. They need picked up, or maybe it is a drowning. It's within the golden hour, so we do have the, the chance, the possibility to get this person back. That cost is absolutely free, zero, big goose egg. We do not charge for public safety dives. So if there is a chance that we can save someone, then our services 100% for the entire team and for the company is volunteered. We don't charge for public safety dives. So I hope that gives you a better understanding of the differences between search and recovery, commercial and salvage, and public safety. Now that all that's kind of out there and explained to you, let's go price out a job together and I'll show you exactly what this particular job is going to cost. In between slips. At least we've got good access to it. Yeah, I wonder if we can take this one right here and secure it off a little bit more. I don't know that I'm going to do that and be responsible for securing up that block. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm definitely leaking a lot of fuel. Uh, it's being held up by the bow. Yeah. You think that fiberglass will hold? I ain't gonna touch it. Looks like we just raise it up and pump it. Yeah, it, it should be hard. Front, it don't matter if the front goes down. It's still tied off on that corner. Mm -hmm. They're pulling the dock down. This one's broke. And that one will pull the dock as it goes down. I don't think it's going to go any further, though. It looks like everything's sealed here. Best of my knowledge, there's rails on the bottom of these, aren't there?
probably. I think yeah. there's rails on yeah, the bottom of these docks, so it may not go they down any not further. Be on these because you got two poles, but the yeah. ones that don't have poles are. Yeah. All right. So nine o'clock. We just if he goes with it. Yeah. All right. So what did we see? We've got a vessel that is partially submerged. It is at a dock system. It's on our local lake, so it's not far travel. It's only about five miles from us. Um, we've got great access to get our equipment out to. No, the dock system's not the best. Uh, to be honest, we're kind of worried that we're going to fall through there. But, uh, but we do have access to it. It's going to be a simple access. Um, we guesstimate four, four people. So we're going to have two divers, two surface crew uh, personnel. And based off what we can see, we're going to guesstimate about four hours tops to do this. We are going to have to tow this vehicle, though. The owner's not around, so we're going to have to tow. We're going to have to use a trailer, obviously, to get the, the vessel out of the water. Not only we've got to raise it, pump it out, we've got to tow it. We've got to keep it pumped out while it's towed because we are going to have to figure out what made this vessel sink. Uh, and then we're going to have to tow it to our facility and store it until the owner can come get it. So on this particular job, we're going to charge by the foot of the vessel. We're not really having to travel more than about five miles. So we're gonna charge per foot of the vessel. You're looking at $150 per foot, uh, let's say 3,900 bucks for that. And then the towing of the vessel, we're gonna charge another 100 for that. So now you're at four grand. And then storage by per day uh, on our facility with that vessel. Um, I think it's, to be honest, I'm not sure what our storage rates are in 2024 because we did actually go up on storage rates. So I'll have to calculate that in as well. But let's say there was no storage, the person could come pick it up today. You're looking at about four grand to lift this vessel up. Now I know some people's gonna look at that and say, oh my goodness, that's a lot of money. Yes, that is a lot of money for a lot of people. However, if you got insurance on your vessel, all you pay is your deductible. Most time your deductibles, deductibles around 500 bucks. Insurance company pays us, everybody's happy. If you don't have insurance, well, I'm gonna be honest with you. If you own a boat, you're on the water, you pretty much should have insurance. Now, others are gonna look and say, that's not a lot of money at all, man, that's dirt cheap. I'd pay that every day. Okay, that's great. I understand in geographical locations, people make more money than others, but here in our area, we feel that that is a reasonable price to get your vessel up. And one thing that you gotta remember, we are actually risking our lives for an inanimate object, okay? So to me, I think four grand to be able to pay my guys, the company still make money, and everybody be safe. Oh, and of course, pay off our insurance. I really believe four grand is a reasonable price for this race. Now, like I said, there is gonna be a couple additional charges there uh, because we just redid the 2024 pricing for storage. I don't remember what that price is. I'll have to look when I get to the shop. But that's it guys, that is how we price out a job. That's what we charge. Um, we did a job back in November that was over a hundred grand. Um, we did one a couple of weeks ago that was about 12 grand. So, you know, prices change depending on the scenario, depending on the depth, depending on a lot of different factors, what resources we have, how much manpower we're gonna use. But that just gives you a better general idea of how we charge for salvage dives and commercial dives and public safety dives and even search and recovery dives. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was eye-opening for you. I hope that uh, it gives you a better understanding if you want to get into this work. I do want to end this video stating this. If you decide to get in this work, please get properly trained to do it and please have insurance. If you and your buddies are certified, say up to the rescue level or search and recovery level, or maybe even your dive instructors, and you're just out there doing search and recovery, that's great. If you're public safety divers and you work for a team or even a private team and you're doing great. If you're doing salvage work, you're a legitimate commercial company, at least here in our state you are, and you need proper insurance. And if you try to hire a diver to come out and help you because you need assistance, please make sure you cover them. All of our guys are covered with insurance, workman's comp, whole nine yards. So please make sure that you're doing this legitimately and safe as well. We don't wanna see anybody get hurt. And I know there's a lot of, a lot of um, divers out there that do this type of work and they're, they're doing it, what I call showboating um, for views or whatnot. 
but they're not legitimate companies and they're they're walking liabilities they really are they are literally walking lawsuits and not only is that you know could potentially hurt them and others it, it can hurt this industry as well so guys that's going to be my final thoughts on this um, make sure you're staying safe make sure you're properly trained and make sure you're properly insured before you get out there and do that but that's going to do it for today's video guys if you got any questions drop me a comment down below and i'll try to answer it the best i can as quick as i can as well but until our next one take care god bless and i'll see you in the next video